Okay, so let's go ahead and keep working on some more of these examples. Um, and in the last video, um, some of these examples that we're going to do now, as you can see by this picture, we'll do example B, uh, revolving, now we're revolving around the, um, a vertical axis. In this case, it's the Y axis. Um, and we're still going to have the same shape. Uh, the biggest difference is going to be that now we're going to be in, you know, in terms of Y. Excuse me, instead of, instead of terms of X. But I can still see, okay, here's that exact same image that I was given before, right? That, that function root X minus two. Okay, so here it is. And now I'm gonna reflect it around the Y axis. And so now it's mirror image sits over here. And again, I would still encourage you to, you know, draw, you know, like a, a distance between the two. And I wanna show you real quick right now that I can no longer go top minus bottom because if I try to go top minus bottom and rotate that around to this side, top minus bottom, I don't get a disc. Like I get like almost like a, a, a cylinder, right? And in fact, if you do take Calc BC, um, or if you know anyone in Calc BC, that's another way to find volume. It's called volume by shells or volume by cylinders. But uh, we are only going to be looking at just washers and, and discs, and so things that are flat. So, um, so we can't draw. I guess my point. <laughs> long story short, uh, I can't draw it that direction, but I can draw it, um, you know, perpendicular to that line of rotation which is in this direction. And that th that's sort of key here. You want to be perpendicular to your uh, line of rotation. So I know I said it, but I'm going to even write it down here. I want to be perpendicular to uh, your line of rotation. And so when your um, line of rotation is a vertical line, then your radius, so I should put it here, your radius is gonna be perpendicular to the line of rotation. So then this radius here is perpendicular to my line of rotation. And then just like the last example, whatever radius you've drawn in here, like that distance, you should mimic it and mirror it over here. And you know, this one, you know, so nicely has been drawn in that you can kind of see the disks that are stacking up. You've got the, um, uh, you know, the, this point right here kind of circulating around circulating around that's going to be your big circle so kind of in green there that's your big circle and then you're going to take away um you know a, a smaller circle this one right here circulating around and circulating around so again we're still getting a disc what i want you to focus too on is like what's the biggest radius the biggest radius is this distance right there the smallest radius is right here, or the inner radius is right there. So we still have big R and little r, and our integral is still gonna be pi times uh, r squared minus r squared. Um, but because we're in this direction, we're going from right to left, right to left. Um, like that, that's how I'm gonna measure things, and it needs to be also in terms of y. So my function that originally was y equals the square root of x minus two, I need to simplify that to solve for x in terms of y. So I'm gonna square both sides just to start off with, and then add the two over. So x equals y squared plus two. So when I start referring to the curve in this direction, I need to make sure that I'm referencing it as x in terms of y. And that's gonna be um, important when I start looking at this function or this curve right there, which is the boundary, if you think about that, this curve here is the boundary of everything that you're always gonna be taking away. The largest radius has a constant boundary. So no matter uh, where I put this, right, it's always gonna be, it's always gonna be to the outer part of that, which is the line that's formed by x equals six. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up then. Um, and we have our integral, so it's gonna be pi. And now think about this for terms of y. So what's the lowest y to the highest y? So the lowest y to the highest y would be from zero to two. Make sure you know that those are y values, okay? So 
So um, again, emphasizing everything has to be in terms of Y. So from zero to two, my lowest to my highest. So I have pi from zero to two, the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. The outer radius is X equals six, and I'm measuring all the way to my line of rotation, zero. Take away the inner radius, which is uh, y squared plus two. Take away my radius of, or my line of rotation of zero squared dy. Okay, now again, looking at the symmetry of this, and I, I just love that. I, I really, really do. So if you if you look at your curve, here's your curve. Here's your curve. The six is the outer, which came from here. The y squared plus two was our inner, which came from there. Look at the symmetry. It's zero. Oops, uh, a little delay there. Zero. Oh, one more time. Uh, I want green. <laughs> zero. Oh my goodness. Green. There it is. Zero and zero. Uh, that that's my line of uh, rotation. Again, it'll be positioned in the same spot in this parentheses. And so far, they've all been in this in this structure. We're going to see that it could change, and 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 we'll see why that changes. But if you remember, you're measuring right minus left, and right minus left. And you just leave it like this. This is perfectly fine. Um, you know, I like this. This illustrates how you're getting your big R. This illustrates how you're getting your little R. Okay, so now the next example that I want to do is example E. So it said it's the same region, but now we're going to revolve it around x equals negative 1. Okay, another vertical line. So x equals negative 1 is right here. All right, so x equals negative 1. So we're going to revolve it around that. And remember, I always have to be perpendicular to that line of rotation. So if I'm perpendicular to that line of rotation, that means that my radius, my thickness between the two, uh, would be measured uh, right to left, just like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, redraw this image, redraw that region over here. Uh, go back to red. So again, and think about preserving distance. This is one, two, three units from the line of rotation. So you could get an idea, okay, you know, it has to preserve that distance. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and, ugh, that's disgusting. <laughs> but I just said it doesn't have to be perfect. So um, no, no judgment. But if you remember my last video, going around uh, vertical lines, like in terms of Y, I feel like I'm not as good at as X's, so, so that's okay. Um, but, you know, um, we'll just do our best. Take this green segment and uh, go ahead and mirror that over here. And again, the, drawing that out kind of gives us the thickness of our disks or the thickness of our washer. So this is our line of rotation. You can kind of see maybe the circular disk that comes around. Here's the inner, inner circle that's going to be cut out. And here's the outer circle that's going to, um, you know, be the farthest that the thing travels. So as this thing goes around, um, and again, think about like, okay, so is it, I'm looking for the area of this particular washer, this particular disc. But remember, there's a whole bunch of these as they're going around, you know, kind of creating that three-dimensional shape. Uh, it's going to look something like this, right? Like kind of like beveled in the middle, beveled in the middle, or flared out, depending on how you look at it. Uh, just, a, just a different line of rotation. So, um, you know, try to envision that and thinking about, okay, so here's the, here's the inner boundary. Here's the outer boundary. And then thinking about where's your radius is radii coming from. So this distance here represents your big R. And then, you know, you could say, oh, oh go orange. This distance here represents your little r. So again, thinking about like the little radius is always going to be bounded by this curve. The big radius is always going to be bounded by um, x equals 6. Like every time x equals 6, x equals 6, right? The little radius is going to actually change each time. It, 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 um, 
right? It gets bigger as it goes up, but it's always based on that function and, or that curve, I should say. And that's why, um, you know, we have to put it as a curve because as this, as this goes up, it's, it, the, the amount that you're taking away increases. And so that's why it's in terms of a function, not a constant. This one is a constant because that side is consistently that particular distance away from that line of rotation. Okay. So let's go ahead and set up our integral. Um, I don't know what color we're on. We'll go this color. So we'll go pi integral. Remember, it's in terms of y, 0 to 2 of r squared minus r squared. And it'll be in terms of y, again, because I'm perpendicular to my line of rotation. And uh, my big radius is 6 minus that negative 1, 0 to 2, 6 minus negative 1 squared minus uh, y squared was a plus 2 minus negative 1 squared dy. And again, uh, I mean, look at and appreciate the symmetry. Here's your right function. Here's your left function or curve, uh, right, and left. Um, they both are positioned, in, you know, at, at the initial point. Uh, here's your line of symmetry. Here's your line of symmetry. Now, um, I probably should do a better job of parentheses on that first guy. Um, you know, like I probably should have entered, put this parentheses here just to say that's the curve minus negative one. Um, you know, and, and I didn't, and it's okay. Um, but, uh, you know, just in case I need to, you know, keep that as a grouping symbol. And honestly, you could certainly leave it just like this. If you prefer, you could simplify that to a seven. Um, you can call that seven squared. If you wanted to make this y squared plus three squared, you could. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing this. But what I, again, what I don't see here is that structure. I don't see curve one the line of rotation, curve to the line of rotation. So, so that's why I said I like this, and and you know it may not be simplified, but it certainly shows you shows that you know the AP reader exactly uh, that you know the format that you're solving these particular problems. Okay, so let's look at the next example. Um, we're gonna go to f and um, y equals three. So now we're we're gonna switch gears. We're we're gonna rotate um, back to a horizontal line, which means my um, my line or my radius that's gonna be perpendicular to that will be in terms of x. So let's see, one, two, three. So here's my line of rotation. And what's different about this is now I'm rotating above. Everything else I was rotating below. So, um, you know, it's still the same concept, but you have to remember that you are measuring things top minus bottom. So we're going to see where that difference comes in here in just a second. Okay, so we'll try to, um, again, uh, mimic that distance, you know, preserve that distance coming over here. Okay, so, so if I start spinning this around, um, if I start spinning this around y equals 3, you know, it's going to come up here. And thinking about maybe drawing just, oops, uh, just drawing one distance, one thickness from top to bottom gets mimicked here from top to bottom. And then you kind of curve that around, curve that around. So there's one of your disks, one of your washers, if you will. You know, so I'm looking for that. So I still see that familiar, almost like an eyeball, you know, or an olive, depending on how you see it. And certainly, you know, if you want to draw in more, you can. Um, not necessary. Uh, I kind of like to highlight this to say, okay, here it is. Here's that shape. Um, but there's more. Like this is the biggest part. It's like a bell of a trumpet. And then, you know, you might have, you know, like one here. We'll kind of curve that around, curve that around, doesn't really matter. Uh, one here, curve that around, you know. So we have this three-dimensional shape that's going around, but all I really need to do is extract that circle. Um, but again, thinking about the radius. So this here oops, will represent my big R. So think about like that distance here, Right, that's your that's the farthest that you would be revolving around that line. And then it's you know neared up there, right, as this thing spins around. So like this becomes my big R because it's the farthest from that line of rotation. 
your inner radius, the one that you'd be taking away each time, um, you know, much, much smaller, obviously. <laughs> but think about like this is going to be changing, right? As you as you start to move down this curve, what you take away varies. So that's your inner radius. And when we measure top minus bottom, this is the first time that the top is actually the line of rotation, not one of the two curves. And that's the big difference. When your line of rotation lies above your curve, then it becomes the top boundary. So when I start setting up my integral, um, I'm still going to see the symmetry. I'm still going to see the same structure for both curves. Um, so I'm going to integrate from 2 to 6. Don't forget your pi. Um, big R squared minus little r squared in terms of x. But to get this big R squared, top minus bottom. Top, which is a line of rotation, minus bottom, to get that distance right there, is actually my curve. So now, so I have pi integral 2 to 6, top 3, minus zero squared minus, and then to get the inner function, um, again, thinking about what that looks like, top minus bottom, top minus bottom, right there. So it's gonna be three minus the curve. Three minus the curve, root x minus two squared, dx. Again, look at the symmetry. Um, you know, our line of rotation came first, but it came first for both. Our curve came second. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, it came second, but it came second for both. And so and this is a first example for where the rotation line minus the curve, right? That order. Rotation line minus the curve, that order. And some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, Mr. Brown, doesn't really matter because look at squared, squared, right? Um, agree. If you accidentally get it in the wrong order, numerically you'll get the right value because you're squaring it, right? Zero minus three versus three minus zero, still nine. But if, if the question says uh, create an integral that represents this volume, then this is the correct format. That's the correct order that you want. Okay, so I think there's one more example uh, on this video. So example G, set it up to calculate x equals eight. And, and you know, so um, x equals eight. Now it's a vertical line. So again, we're switching gears here. Uh, so x equals eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So so over here, x equals eight. Um, and, and uh, you know, where I'm going with this one is now my line of rotation is to the right of the curve. So it's going to behave just like when the line of rotation was above uh, the curve. So um, I'm going to be anticipating the, the order switching within the parentheses, but still draw out the picture, you know, preserve that distance. So, you know, like the, um, if I'm going to draw this image, uh, what would it look like over here? And then because I have to be perpendicular to that line of rotation, when I measure the thickness of this image or of this region, it's going to be the thickness over here. And then go ahead and think about what well, that would curve around, right? So you have that right through the center there. And this would curve around and be right through the center, so it's like the eyeball, right? That that, that eyeball thing again. Um, and so this is uh, our area, one disc, so big circle minus little circle, big radius minus little radius. Uh, certainly, you know, <laughs> you know if you want to highlight it or 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 add this, just to kind of, um, I guess, emphasize that bigger and smaller circle. But remember, like you know, there's there's going to be you know circles all over, you know, like would be, you know, as you start to kind of create this like inner cylinder, right? You know, and like I said, just, it doesn't have to be a perfect sketch, um, but just so you can kind of visualize, I'm looking at this circle right here. That's what I'm trying to find an area of. Um, and thinking about your radius. So this right here, is the farthest you'd go on your rotation. And then uh, the um, 
smaller one is here. Now, just the way that this one is set up, you maybe already noticed this, that your smaller radius has a, it has a consistent thickness. So like here's the one where that's always going to be constant, that distance there. The one that's going to be changing actually is your bigger radius. As this radius kind of goes up, all right, it's going to be changing. And so it's going to be the one that's based on the curve. But ultimately, um, we still have that structure, big R squared minus little r squared. And so when I go ahead and draw that, uh, let's see, we go here. So it'll be from pi. Remember, these are y values because I'm in terms of y. I'm perpendicular to that y axis. So it's going to be from 0 to 2, big R squared minus little r squared dy. And I do like to write that dy there, even though right now it makes no sense syntactically, but I like to write it there because it's emphasizing, ooh, I need to be in terms of y. Hmm, good reminder. Okay, pi zero to two. Again, big r squared, how do I measure this distance? It's right minus left. So the right side is eight minus the left side, which is our curve. So um, our curve then is y squared plus 2. And notice here, I did use parentheses because I'm subtracting that whole curve. Right minus left minus uh, right 8 minus uh, 6. And then that's in terms of y. So again, think about that structure. Look at um, the fact that this is 8, our line of rotation, and this is 8, our line of rotation. Look at um, the fact that this is our curve, and then this is our curve. And why did we put this one here? Because that curve was the curve that's farther from our line of rotation compared to this curve which is closer. Uh, and so again, it's always outer radius or the outer rim minus the inner rim. Okay, so um, I think that's all of the examples. I think that's all of the notes on this section. And um, it's, like I said, it's going to take some practice. It definitely takes time. And I think what I'll do is we'll continue to work through some of those examples. Uh, there's extra problems in our packet. And so, um, you know, watch for postings because either, uh, you know, maybe we'll um, explain them or, you know, uh, I'll do another video that just walks through the solution just so you can see it. Um, more time. So, okay. So, uh, very nice. Keep working, and um, we'll check back to the to the website.